how are you defining in your head when something is a trend? What is it that you look for that you go, oh, this is something that I can see is a trend. I'm going to do it. Well, you can kind of tell when a sound is blowing up. Like I'll, I'll click on a sound and if the accounts that have used the sound are smaller accounts that have blown up from the sound, I can pretty much tell that yeah. it's a good sound to use. Okay. But in terms of my niche, like anime TikTok, it's gotten bigger, but there have been a lot of anime TikTok specific trends. Yeah. And even the trends that are on like the larger like whole of TikTok, if I see that it's trending like crazy, I'll just take it, turn it into like an anime song, fit it to my niche. So yeah, I would just say like you <laughs> sucks, but you gotta you gotta be on TikTok a lot and just know it's trending. Well, Lauren, thank you for um, agreeing to be on the podcast. Really excited to have you on here. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm excited uh, for the conversation ahead. Very different than uh, quite a few of the guests that I've had on. Um, and if you don't mind, it'd be great to just get an introduction to you. Um, uh, we were talking just before we started about kind of the array of, of different things that you seem to be doing, which is what really interested me uh, about you. And so, yeah, it'd be great to just get like a, an overview of everything you do, like your day to day, week to week. Uh, what your main oh, focus cool. is. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Lauren. I go by Toasty on the internet, Toasty Marshmallow. And I start, I first started posting in 2020 and I started off on TikTok making anime videos. It was actually a spam account. Uh, I really started off making musical theater singing videos on a separate account. And then as Broadway shut down, I was like, oh, I want to reconnect with, you know, the anime community because I was also always have been a huge anime fan since like I was seven or eight. And so I made an anime spam account and I just put two pet names together, Toasty, cause I want a brown cat with a white belly named Toasty. And then a marshmallow, which would be a white rabbit and it would be best friends. I had a rabbit before. Um, and yeah, so I started making uh, videos on that spam account. One of them was a singing video, a cover of Neon Genesis Evangelion, the opening that blew up. And from there, I started making more of those covers, reconnecting with the community. Uh, eventually got reached out to by RDC World 1, got to do a collaboration with them on their Anime House 5. I did the opening and ending song for them. And so from there, I was like more established. And now I am branching out and doing all sorts of things. I got this $500 pre-built that I bought in <laughs> also the pandemic to start streaming. And that's how we started streaming. My PC has cost thousands of dollars now. If I could go back and do it, I would get an actual PC instead of a pre-built because now it's a custom. And um, yeah, so, and I'm also an actor uh, here in the city still. So I do acting as like, I guess my other thing, uh, though social media has become most of my full-time income. Which, is, which I'm very lucky to say, but um, I, I wouldn't uh, make this my <laughs> full-time thing completely just yet. Yeah. What made you get into streaming then? Like when, what point? Because so you, you, you started TikTok before you started streaming, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once I got, I don't know what number I was at on TikTok, <laughs> but I just saw a bunch of anime TikTok creators suddenly making t uh, Twitch accounts. And I was like, oh, I mean, I do live streams on TikTok. I guess it would be fun to like play some games with people too. And also I saw that, you know, Twitch had the whole subs thing. Wait, let me, this ambulance, New York City. Gonna let that <laughs> pass on That's okay, you can't, you, can't, you can't really hear it that much, it's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, Discord takes care of that. Um, but yeah, so I saw that, you know, it was a monetary opportunity. I saw it as another way to connect with my community, make some gaming content, because I also have always been a big video game person, uh, loved all the Sonic games growing up, was a big Animal Crossing addict in the early 2000s on GameCube, and all the Pokemon games. So yeah, just wanted to start doing it, I guess. What sort of, so you, you wanted to start it? to play games or was it like more v variety just just chatting it was all games all back games. then i didn't do just chatting on twitch because i was already doing that basically on my tiktok lives okay which at that time i was going live every day on tiktok after i would post a video and that definitely helped a lot but <laughs> i fell off of that um so it was mainly just to play games with my community and 
I, I don't know, just like try out streaming. I had not watched Twitch streams before I became a streamer. So it was kind of just something new and like fresh. I, I didn't really know about the whole landscape of it like I do now. And so how long, how long ago was that? That was two years ago. Two years ago. Back in 2020. So how, how has from then to now changed then in like in your in your understanding like where you have maybe where you want to take it or like is it at where you want it to be or you have like ideas and visions for like what you're doing with it i still have a lot of ideas and visions for my stream i am leaning into more just chatting now as i realized my community mainly <laughs> likes just chatting for me and doesn't really care if i play video games yeah. <laughs> um so <laughs> i'm trying to do more like streams where there's like a topic or interviewing um my stream community or you know like bringing on a guest something that's like chatting based uh has done a lot better for me than my video game streams have you found so your audience on twitch where where have they come from predominantly predominantly my instagram i i find okay. instagram and twitter good like ways to get people on to my twitch like from the live streams um i'm not the best at posting twitch clips or posting a lot of uh content that i create on twitch onto other platforms so i definitely could use it better uh in that sense but until i hire an editor for that i don't see myself really uh, doing that but as my instagram and twitter grows i see growth from that what sort of what sort of content do you post on instagram that's this is it different my than your instagram, tiktok or, or just re or reels as well they're all the same so i i will just make uh tiktok content and then repurpose it for all platforms so now i'm on instagram youtube shorts twitter facebook reels i that's what they're called yeah, yeah. <laughs> and pinterest which is a new one that I'm trying to like get into. So yeah, it's it's nice to have TikTok as that that landing place where I can just like make all the content and then repurpose it from there. It saves me a lot of time. I recommend that everybody does that. And I've had like videos do like okay on TikTok and then blow up on like Instagram or YouTube Shorts. So it's nice to like get a second chance to get that audience. Yeah, I find I've noticed that a lot. Like you can have ones that do that do awful on one platform and then do really well huh. on another. Uh, it makes no sense. I'm like, well, was the video just not good to like this certain group of people or was it yeah. a good video and they just didn't like show it to people? Mm. It's weird. No one will ever know. No one will ever know. Well, mm -hmm. how, how many, let's talk about like then your, your like posting cadence and like planning and, and, and so on and so forth. And cause I seen that you have quite like a high output of, of content and, love to talk a bit more about like your work your workflow specifically with with i like ideas like how do you how do you record ideas uh store them decide which ones you're going to go with like record posting like like if you could walk through like all of that 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 would be great in terms of my day-to-day -day, i would say you know i wake up make sure i eat a good breakfast because it's important to take care of yourself and after that, I will use the entire like middle portion of my day. So like noon to about 5 p.m. to focus on either creating content, reposting content or like, I guess, doing research um, and then other things because I also have auditions and things. But I like to write out a lot of content since I don't find that when I do trends, they do very well. So I tend to make completely original content, which is fun and also very risky because sometimes I'll, you know, make a lot of new video ideas that just do horribly. But it also has really big payoff if you have an audience who connects to that and then you're the only person who provides that. So like my anime girl dates a hood dude series is really popular and that's like completely original content and it's like funny and it's like a short skit, one person, like one cut. It's it's easy to make. It's uh, it's like quick quick for TikTok and then I repost it into all platforms and I can expand them onto like full length YouTube videos if I wanted. But in general, I would say I will just wake up and decide what video I'm in the mood for. I don't really push myself to put out videos if I'm not feeling it because yeah. I find the videos 
aren't as good if I push myself to make it rather than being inspired in the morning or in the moment because I'm still an artist, like I'm an actor, performer, so I have to feel inspired to make the video. And a lot of my covers take forever because if people are begging for it in the comments, a lot of times that makes me not want to do a song cover. Whereas if I just have like the spur of the moment thought, like today I woke up and I was like, huh, I think it'd be really fun to like do the Sonic X theme song cover. No one asked for that, but I'm going to do it and it's going to be great. And that kind of thing is like what I like to do when it comes to like music. Um, yeah, so I would say just I just have like everything in my notes app and I get like a, a gist of what I'm going to do and I, I just do it and like to see what works and see what feels right, feels good. Nice. What, what do you find that that does do well for you? Do you are there like certain types of content? Um, on your TikTok that, that 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 generally do well and that you lean on for like what you know is going to do well um, as opposed yeah. to just like trying new things all the time. Mm -hmm. So whenever I will do like I'll if I do do trends, I always do like a twist on a trend. So, for example, there will be like a trending audio and I'll remix it to make it like an anime themed audio. Okay. So there was a there's a few audios I've done this with. Um, a really popular one was there was this uh, training audio that went, here comes the boy. Hello, boy. And it was like people showing their cats and like their animals. And I redid it to here comes the synth. Hello, synth. And it was a bunch of like guys doing it and like girls. It was hilarious. <laughs> like girls using it to like thirst trap and stuff. Um, <laughs> or I'll do like my anime skits or like my anime, anime girl voice in the anime girl like costume. And just like do a trend then, and that that usually does well. Um, but you also can't go wrong with like a quick reaction video on something trendy. Like I I did a, a reaction video or or kind of like a video to the Little Mermaid, like um, you know Black Ariel thing, and I put it on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And on TikTok it did like 300k, but on YouTube Shorts it did like 6.5 million views. Oh wow! And That's a lot. that was like the easiest video to make, <laughs> and it was like reaction content. And you can always lean on that, I I would say. Um, but in general, I don't I don't really like reaction content because I don't think it's as creative as you know I I want to be. So yeah, that would those are definitely like my my three that I lean on for engagement. Do you think that YouTube? reaction content does well better on youtube because i've no i think that it does i've noticed a lot of people do it Definitely. on youtube for shorts Definitely. especially i mean shorts is tricky because like you have to have the title right and then people gotta click it like they gotta the the idea of having someone click your video is so different than like tiktok where it will just pop up um but it can be really powerful if it like gets recommended over and over so i would say like post it everywhere because you don't know where it's going to do well yeah no I, I agree i th I think there's different different types of content do well on different platforms but if you've got all the time in the world then it's possible to create different content for every platform but <laughs> most people just don't have the time to do that to really yeah. to really do it well like, and like post different types of content for each of your audiences on each of the platforms i've been thinking about it a lot recently but and trying to figure out how what what's the solution rather than creating three pieces of unique pieces of content for each yeah, one every time. Yeah, I mean, time. it's hard because you they they're like you have to have a niche, but then you also get pigeonholed if you have a niche. And I don't know. For YouTube, I'm trying to create more long form content just because I think that's smart. It's yeah, not yeah. going anywhere. But I did start a new Instagram account for my lifestyle content now I'm making because I live in New York City so I want to capitalize off that and I also go out a lot so I'm like I should just start filming it and make videos and some of them I've done like pretty well so definitely consider making a new account for you know other things what long form uh, YouTube content are you like experimenting with so I'd really like to make some I don't want to call them think pieces but like video essays on like uh, the anime community and yeah. just the changes like I had a video idea for like you know explaining why anime is mainstream now and you know how we're seeing all these celebrities in different costumes now and just like I guess the the boom of the anime industry that's happening um 
and and things like you know the death of like shoujo anime and going in depth on topics that no one i guess really dissects because it's just anime and yeah you don't really make a think piece on anime but it's it's cool so i definitely want to do that i will need to hire an editor first to make that are you going are you, are you going to hire an editor i am going to hire an editor <laughs> are you looking as for soon, one it's very... i i am looking for an editor it's difficult to find one. It's not as easy as just like picking one like off the shelf, like that can just do what you want them to do. I speak to a lot of people that all struggle with finding someone that's aligned with the direction. The and brand. Type. Yeah, the brand. Yeah, it's really, it's it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. On your TikTok, uh, what, what, do you, what drives conversion of follows in your content? So I always remind people to follow. Yeah. I think it's smart to do it doesn't hurt the video if you just do a follow plus at the end yeah i always do that i don't know if it helps yeah i think it helps uh in in all of my viral videos that i've had follow plus versus the ones where i haven't had follow plus like a reminder yeah. to follow i definitely get more followers from okay. the people where i remind them to follow because sometimes people forget to follow you like a lot of people will see your content love your content i'll get comments from people like oh my gosh i love your videos check they're not even following me why don't you follow me, bro? So you got to <laughs> remind them because they don't even know that they're not following you. Um, but yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is just reminding people. It's the same with YouTube. Just remind them to subscribe. I think you're right. Some people do forget. Like I've seen people yeah. save my videos and they don't follow. And I'm like, why have you just saved it and not followed? Like, Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you obviously love me. You and, and I did the same. Like I wasn't subscribed to Ludwig for a long time and I watched yeah. all of his videos. I love him. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not even subscribed to him. What? And then he reminded us to subscribe one day and I was like, okay. What do you like about Ludwig? I just think he's very articulate and I, I think he has very, um, very fair opinions on situations. I like, yeah, I like, I like him. My boyfriend also loves him. So that happens. <laughs> yeah i like him a lot i speak about him to a lot of people just because i think he's just the prime example of how to master streaming and yeah and, and content from from streaming like just i've uh, never seen his live streams but i love his youtube content well his con his youtube content is his live streams so you don't need right. you don't need to watch his live streams because they are his youtube videos are just just a, a, a condensed version of his live stream which is yeah which is just which is just great because it's just like, but it requires a lot of planning. It requires a hell of a lot yeah. of planning. And people don't often want to put the planning into live streaming because it's just easier just to live stream with no plan. Um, that is that is my issue. And I'm trying to be better about it. <laughs> what you want, you want to plan more of your live streams, yeah. Yeah, because right now streaming is kind of something where I'm like, okay, I got a general idea. I have a topic in mind. And then I run out of talking points for it. And I'm like, okay, I guess we'll just play a game now. Like, I really need to think of it as like, and he's had a whole video on this, like beginning, middle, end. It's just, you know, I got to put in the time for it. Mm. That's that's all it is. And I definitely want to like push for partner this year. Um, I could have I could have done this earlier, but I just, you know, I put it off for so long. But I also feel like partner is something that I want to feel ready for before I you know, like push for it because I see a lot of my friends, you know, they did the partner push and then like their viewers fell off. And, yeah. um, I also feel like I want to, you know, upgrade my equipment, maybe get a new PC, maybe get like an actual camera. So mm. I'm not, not quite there yet, but I definitely want to start like making the content itself better. You're right about people. People always go, for <clears throat> I'm very against the partner push because it, mm -hmm. it 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 gets people to tr try and hype hype and inflate their viewership by people supporting them that maybe wouldn't naturally just watch their stream like they're just mm -hmm. doing it just to like oh tab me like appreciate a tab or look like what why like and then and then you get yeah. pa partner and then everyone that who was just there for you part of that like thing have just disappeared and then you maybe yeah. suffer the consequences of of dropping viewership and what that does to your, I don't know, mental health or just, I don't know. It's not nice going from numbers up here to the numbers down there really. Oh yeah. No, I've um, gone through it. I mean, not with Twitch, but other platforms. Yeah. I'm not, when I say partner push, like I'm not going to push for partner. I'm going to 
gradually yeah, get yeah, more yeah. followers yeah, no, and that will be my partner push <laughs> yeah no i think I, I i understood what you meant i think <clears throat> how often are you streaming at the moment um right now i'm doing too long not long define long of two like four hour streams a okay. week yeah, on for, twitch yeah and and then i'm also uh, interested to tiktok gaming because tiktok is where i was born <laughs> and i have some connects to tiktok who like i guess i'm in their discord and they're like it's nice to have a point person i guess yeah so i am considering you know live streaming more on there also just to kind of grow with a new i guess gaming platform um don't know what's going to come out of it but probably gonna start streaming on there like twice a week and playing games on there yeah. instead of just chatting because they they actually like really push the discoverability of gaming streams right now like i logged on a tiktok and i saw somebody with like a thousand viewers and they only had only had like 200k followers on tiktok yeah which that's for tiktok a lot. is that's pretty quite low a, yeah that's but that many viewers is that's quite a lot yeah yeah it's it's crazy so i was like hmm maybe this is worth looking at so i'm i'm also considering doing that well, you could you could dual stream now, so, but but the, the problem with dual formatting the problem with dual streaming is is that you can only really give your full attention to one or the other, and I always yeah. find that it's like I've spoken to people about this, and I always feel like it's if you're focused on Twitch chat, which everyone TikTok is always second when you're when mm -hmm. you're when you're dual streaming and. That's not necessarily a good thing because there are people who yeah. are just watching you on TikTok and you miss their engage and you miss their hello and you miss their their want to interact with you because you're too busy looking at Twitch chat and that interaction could be a negative one for them and mm -hmm. that could jeopardize the relationship that that, that even the a small one so be it like that, that they had with you instead of focusing Especially on them when they and just... donate and you don't see it oh exactly like... yeah 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 so... i i just put it up and i'm like not reading this i do like a little green screen i'm like i'm on twitch right now come mm. through instead of doing i've done one dual live stream in the formatting i couldn't i don't have dual pcs so i couldn't do the two like you know separate obs layouts so i'm definitely just gonna do separate streams when i do it I actually think doing separate streams is could be really beneficial, like just because mm -hmm. of the fact you give your full attention to both. And I, I, I see it like you give your full attention to TikTok, build like a relationship, a, a stronger relationship with the people who haven't followed you on Twitch because they mm -hmm. just watch you on TikTok. And then when the relationship has been built to a strong enough point where they have developed trust from you, you then can get them over to Twitch. Right. Uh, and I always think that that's actually a really good strategy, but a lot of people don't do it because it's like, well, if I'm streaming on TikTok, I might as well be streaming on Twitch. And I think you don't always have to yeah. look at it like that, but people are so fixated on just Twitch streaming all the time. I mean, uh, there's new opportunities coming on TikTok. So. Yeah. When did you, how did you, so your follow account you, uh, is 1.2 million? Or it's at 1.3 right now. 1.3. How, how did you, how did you get to that? Like how many, like, did you have our TikToks? Talk me through like the different TikToks that like has got you that, that primarily that growth. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely like having several viral, like big viral TikToks, but also for, for my first like come up on the app, I did a lot of duettable content. Yeah. And I duets definitely aren't as big anymore, but okay. in 2020 they were. And so my goal was to be like, oh, well, you might not follow me, but you're going to see my face everywhere. And eventually you're going to want to follow me. And so I would have these duettable videos where it'd be like questions for female anime fans. If you're a female anime fan, duet me. And then I would have just like everyone on anime TikTok doing these duets, including my friends, including big creators. And then I would do duettable song covers, which I still do a lot of. Um, and that was a really good way to, I guess... It's like getting people to make an ad for you, but they don't know they're making an ad for you because it's also content. It helps yeah, them yeah. make content. So it's an equal exchange. 
but it definitely helped with gaining trust from that side of TikTok and like they they see my face everywhere. Um, but other than that, I have had a lot uh, of vir viral videos. So my biggest one was 26 million and it was the dumbest video ever, but it was like me sneezing. It was a singing trend. It was a sneeze. And then I would sing like 10 seconds of an anime opening. <laughs> and that went crazy for whatever reason. And that's my most viewed video. Um, other ones have been from getting bullied, from making a video that people consider being cringe yeah. and then having people, I know, and then having people feel bad for me in the comments and be like, she's not doing any, anything <laughs> wrong. She's just cosplaying. And then they'll follow me. <laughs> um, and then others have been like trending sounds I've made, like the one that I told you about or um, just like. Yeah, I would say like trending sounds, those those go really, those do really well. Um, but yeah, I would just say a bunch of viral videos, but then also like consistent like engagement. My engagement's definitely down crazy right now. TikTok's algorithm is getting harder. But back in the good old days, like my average was like at least like 100, 200, 300K like viewers per video. Yeah. Um, but still like having a couple like pop in videos like every once in a while i always try to at least go semi viral a couple times a month to just keep the growth happening what, what do you mean by that sorry every every couple of months you try and do one that you think or a couple a couple of times a month i'll try to get a semi viral video so that's like i will there are times when i will make a video because i think or hope that it will go viral yeah. to keep my engagement up yeah for the purpose of, honestly, like brands, like making sure that I have the numbers to match up to that 1.3 million because no one talks about it. But if you have a million followers on an app, a certain level of engagement is expected. And then when you don't have that engagement, it can look very bad. So it's, it's a kind of a requirement to keep a certain level of engagement up to retain your uh the the money the money you charge for brand deals or yeah. your rate um so i make sure that I, I i reach for those kind of videos every once in a while would you say that you do you like creating those sorts of videos a lot of them can be very simple yeah or like reaction videos like you're baiting kind of like yeah it's like baiting and... but it's not bad like the Little Mermaid one, or I just made like a celebrity Halloween costume reaction video and that did like 300K views and I knew it would do well because yeah. it's a celebrity in a costume and it was, I posted it right after it dropped. So they're not hard to make. It's not, a, it's not dreadful to make them. It's yeah. just like, I wish you guys supported my other content like this. <laughs> it's just not where you're at your most creative probably. Yes, is, is... exactly. <laughs> you talked about like brand deals and stuff can we talk about that mm -hmm. then like what is like a, a, were you referring to brand deals that predominantly you're doing uh, on, on tiktok or across other social media platforms uh, i'm interested to go a bit deeper into that i just started building out my other social platforms last year yeah before that i really had like no other following uh so if, for the people who are watching this like definitely build out your other platforms it's very important but um, the majority of my brand deals are still TikTok. I do sometimes get like an Instagram real request or like an Instagram story. But for the most part, it's all TikTok. So that's where I'm really trying to keep my engagement up. And they'll just like see me on their For You page, I guess. And or uh, they'll they'll find me through like search and try to be matching me with brands because sometimes it's like a a manager or like a managing company that will reach out not the actual brand yeah yeah and then i mean you can get rejected from brand deals so they can reach out and then like rescind the offer if your views are down so it's important to keep it up so so you're not outreaching are they, are you, are they predominantly just coming to you then um yeah i when i reach out for collaborations i usually am doing them for my lifestyle content so that i can like go do it for free make yeah. a video so that i can get people to reach out to me to then get paid so i don't think i've 
had any major brand deals where I've reached out to them first, but I do know that it's a strategy and I, I recommend people do that because it yeah. does work sometimes. So at the moment then are you just, <clears throat> you just, you just basically relying on you, you, you can rely on just brands coming to you because there's the, the volume is high enough to meet like whatever goals or desires you have for income with regards to that, like pot of money and all of your incomes basically. Like as long as I get like two to two to three major brand deals every couple months, yeah, that'll hold me off because of like the rate, but also like they pay you out on like thirty days, sixty day, like it takes forever to, for them yeah, to pay yeah. you. So in between that time, like got to make money some other way. And so I like to throw events. It's not I don't do that for the money, but I like to yeah. connect with the community here in NYC. And so I'm also like a party host now. That's okay. a new thing. Just started that this month. Um, and I have a really cool partnership with the PC Cafe here in New York called Brooklyn. And so I throw events there. And then I also try to make my rent every month in, I guess, AdSense across all platforms, okay. Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, not monetized on YouTube yet. Almost there though, because of shorts. Thank yeah. goodness for that that Little yeah. Mermaid video. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I also make money from acting. So it's a very diverse pool, but it makes it so I don't have to work a nine to five. Even though I've considered, like, I see my friends in corporate sometimes, and I'm like, man, I want to be on that corporate life. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm quickly like, wait, maybe not. But no. <laughs> what 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 stresses you out in your lifestyle like that? Oh my gosh, it's just, it's, it's unpredictable. Like you could have, also you can have brand deals that are like offered to you and then taken back. Um, brands will pay you late. They'll pay you so late. Oh my goodness. I have had brands pay me like 30 days late on a net 60. I've had them just, I don't know. They're, they they act, the, the bigger the brand I found, the worse they act. The worse they are at paying out creators. It's horrible. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the worst part about it is not getting paid on time and then having to, you know, figure out your rent, <laughs> especially in New York. My rent is high. Yeah. It's not cheap to live in New York. I don't know it's whether it's, it's probably more expensive than London, but I think it's maybe similar. Yeah. How do in you, big city. how do you find balance in your life? If you, if, if you're your own boss, I've always, I always like to ask people, like, if you're your own boss and you're in control of all of your time, like, how do you, how do you switch off? How do you decide you've done enough work today or you need to do more work today? Like, what, I'm just curious, like, how you manage, like, mentally, like, the challenges of just mm. being your own boss and deciding what. I mean, what? it takes a lot of discipline, but I feel like, in general, I don't like to overwork myself or push myself too hard. Like if, if I'm just not in the mood to to make content or yeah. work, I can always repost a video. I have so many videos. Yeah. I have reposted viral videos that also will go viral a second yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have a catalog of videos I can just post if I don't make that one video a day. Um, And some days like, some days I just want to like go outside, hang out with friends, hang out with my boyfriend. Like I don't want to think about content because, you know, as a creator, it's on your mind all the time, 24-7. Yeah. I'll have those moments. I'll, I'll be like, oh, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I'll go on LinkedIn. I'll search for a corporate job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a nap. I'm like, okay, I feel better. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would just say like you got to pace yourself and surround yourself with people who you can make content with or who can help you because I did it alone for a long, long time. And having people here now who I can collaborate with has made the experience way more enjoyable, has made streaming more enjoyable. Like when I stream like with someone else on the other end who I can talk to on stream, it's just mm -hmm. 10 times better. So uh, yeah, I would just, I would just say like, you know, stay disciplined, but also don't be afraid to take breaks. No one's going to die if you don't post a video that day. It's not that deep. We're just posting videos. So I literally did a video the other day like that, where I just had that thought in my head because everyone is like everyone that creates TikToks. I think they get themselves into this hole of like, got to post every day. Oh no, what if I don't post today? And it's like, when you say, about fine. it, like no one, 
no one gives a shit if you don't <laughs> post tomorrow. Like, no one's there waking up going, oh, no, there's no post from Toasty yeah. here today. Like, well, my day's so bad now. And I'm like, you've yeah. got to think, like, so be it. So be it. But then, but then, yeah. but it's very easier said than done, though. Like, everyone, yeah. I, I myself, I'm sure you may be the same. You maybe stress yourself out because you wanted to get a video out. And for whatever reason, it, it, you couldn't get it out. And you let, it, you let it ruin your day. But you and then I see it. someone else make that video and I'm mad. I'm like, <sighs> sometimes if you sleep on an idea, the idea goes to the next person. Yeah. So you get that, you get that idea. You have to make it. You have to make it because if you don't, someone else is going to take it. I guess so. When you've, um, you said you've been doing more collaborations now, like you, mm -hmm. you, how's that been happening? Like, is that just because you've, uh, you're in New York now and you just, uh, how, how are you meeting creators, other people to collaborate is what I'm kind of asking. So, uh, I mentioned the PC cafe. So Brooklyn has a creators program that I'm in. Okay. Nice. Um, I actually haven't interacted with a lot of those creators, but I meet creators at their events a lot. <laughs> um, but my main my main creator hub is the Dreamers House NYC. They are a New York City based content group of predominantly like POC and uh, New York like creators who are like from New York. So <laughs> they kind of like toughened me up in the city also. But like we'll go on field trips. Like we went on we went on field trips to this like museum this morning. Um, and we'll make content there and every other Tuesday they'll host an event and they'll have like a rap cipher and they have like a green room or a green screen room and they have like a white room and they have like like games and consoles and stuff and you can just collaborate with anybody who's there. Like yeah. I met the New York City rat guy there, the guy, I don't know if you know who that is, but uh, Jonathan <laughs> Lyons, he has like the giant like rat head and he like does performance art in the city okay. and he like is like a giant subway rat. <laughs> Um, I've met like rappers and musicians, producers who can help me with music. Uh, my friend Lizzie, who is incredible creative and she pushes, she just pushes me to like be a better like creator and not like stop, I guess. So yeah, I, I just say like finding that community and that, that positive energy of like other creators, the kind of energy where it's like not annoying because a lot of creators can be clout chasey and yeah. phony yeah. about you know like it's true so finding like genuine people who are down to make content but like in a passionate inspired way and not in a way of like oh i want to i want to have all the clout like i want to pop off like i want to be the next like pokemon i want to be the next like Hassan. like yeah, yeah. we don't we don't do that here we don't do that here that, what sort of crits that sounds pretty cool to be fair so you just you just Anyone can go, right? Like yeah. anyone and you just are like, uh, there must be people of all sorts of types of content though. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's really artists, but <laughs> the line between artists and content creators is really blurred nowadays because to survive as an artist, you kind of have to make content so that yeah. people know where to find you, know how to buy your stuff, know how to like, you know, but yeah, I haven't seen anyone go who hasn't been about that. Yeah. It's a bunch of inspired people, inspired artists who are just trying to get better and collaborate with dope dope people. It's like, it's good vibes. It's good uh, vibes. I really like that idea. I think that's missing. I think that's missing uh, mm -hmm. a, a lot in there's definitely not like that in London. There's not much of that. It's it's more like aimed at <clears throat> like say, I say artists but like artists in the sense of like music musicians and and artists who yeah paint draw rather than I don't know, say tiktokers but like yeah. you know people that create video content right like yeah. it's, 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 it's still art isn't it uh um, it's like a content house I tell everyone it's a content house yeah but that's much better to that's much better that's content house is a much better word for it rather than yeah something related to like artists because then people probably be like, yeah. oh like oh they're probably gonna look at me and go why well, you just create fucking stupid videos like that's yeah not, that's not art <laughs> they did get they got uh picked for the snapchat show um class of last year so they now they have like their own snapchat show and they do like funny skits and like we we film those also when we're there um and it's just like every other week and it's very like inspiring and you get to meet a bunch of people it's, it's a nice nice thing 
Is there anything else that you do that helps you with inspiration for ideas and content? Like anything that's like you go to in, in your routine, anything like exercise or going for a walk or I don't know, anything that you think is like really good for your your well-being and your inspiration and your creativity? Definitely staying up to trend like on pop culture, like yeah. watching anime. Yeah. Going to the movies. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But really just going outside, partying with my friends. I think living life is the best thing you can do. You sound like and you have a nice life, to be honest. It, like it sounds, listen, pretty, it sounds pretty fun. It, it, can, it can be a lot of fun. But sometimes I don't do what I need to be doing because I get distracted because I'm in New York. So yeah. it's just a lot of, there's a lot to do. But I, I say that when I, whenever I go out to the club, or not to the club, whenever I go out to like, an after party for say like an anime convention or like comic con for example um i say it's networking because i have literally it's it's not that i'm going out to the club to network with people mm -hmm. but whenever i'm at an event like that i always meet people who end up being huge influences in my life my content like recently met the people who do social media for crunchyroll at a freaking karaoke night for comic-con a couple weeks ago and then one of them reached out to me to do a brand deal for him so it's random stuff like that where i'm just like you can mix like the fun part of content yeah. creation with the real nitty-gritty like content like it's there's room for both and i think people just take it too serious or they're not being genuine and then they meet those people at these parties like i heard a lot about twitchcon they meet these people out in the streets <laughs> And they're not giving genuine energy. So then people don't want to work with them. Like, mm. it's so important to be a genuine person, a genuine yeah. human. And I mean, that's the New York in me. I'm not from New York. I'm from Ohio. But now that I'm around a bunch of New Yorkers, like, they definitely <laughs> rubbed off on me. Like, just being, like, a real, like, a real human, like, in, in all the stuff that you do. Nice. I think I just had that thought of, like, your content and, like, the IRL stuff has a really nice, like, just crossover of, of the fact that you can go to these events and they are probably quite laid back and, and chilled and like party sort of vibe. But then you could also mm -hmm. meet people that um, are fans of anime or, or are creators theirself. Like, yeah. and so it's like you're, it, it's when you create content on something you're genuinely passionate and interested about, I think it's a lot easier to then find stuff in real life that you're there because you actually want to be there because you enjoy it, not because you're there just to network. Uh, yeah. The network like is just the second thing. It. Yeah. Yeah. Like I never go into those events like, oh, I'm going to network tonight. Yeah. But when my friends are like, you're partying so much. Why are you always partying? I'm like, I'm networking. Yeah. Stop. yeah, yeah like, I'm working. <laughs> I never thought of it like that, but that's actually such a good way to just to be genuine because like, the networking is coming second there because you're there for the event yeah. because you genuinely love the event. It just so happens that it kind of relates to your content as well. Uh, exactly. That's, that's, but that, that's, that's, that's like <laughs> perfection that not, not everyone has that or like, I don't know, a lot of people create content on stuff that I don't think they're truly passionate about. They're just doing it because mm -hmm. I don't know. The trends. For trends, for numbers, right? Like, are they really? Yeah, you, uh, I mean, you can do that. You can do that. You I have to sometimes. Question its sustainability. Uh, yeah. Like, are you going to be doing this in five, ten years time? I mean, you don't have you don't have to be doing it in five, ten years time. Right. I just think that some people. I mean, I don't see myself being an influencer, an influencer as in relying on posting content every day or even yeah. weekly for more than two more years. Then so what? what? What's after that? So after that, <laughs> after that, I'm really trying to move more into voiceover so that I can okay. stay connected to the anime community. Um, I would love to be able to like host a show for a network or like a platform uh, such as Crunchyroll. And you know, anime is growing, so I can. I, I don't totally know what Crunchyroll is. Can you explain what? That you know what Crunchyroll is? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh my god. Okay, Crunchyroll is the number one anime streaming site. Back when I was in the early two thousands, it started off as a blog. Yeah. And then people would post anime onto it illegally. Okay. And then somebody bought it and they turned it into this massive streaming site and it merged with Funimation, which was also another huge streaming site. Um, so they're just like home to like most of 
the anime that comes out. It's like the largest anime website. And they throw events. They uh, always have like booths at Comic-Con, all the anime cons. And they're good people. They're good people. So they're like a brand. They're proper brands now, like I guess. Like... Yeah, they're proper brand and streaming platform. And you said you'd like to have a show on, on there in partnership yeah, with them? or there. Yeah. On there or just like work on their team or i mean i'd be open there's going to be more like anime platforms coming out so i would just like to be on a team with people because i realize like community is number one for me when it comes to work so even when i started off posting on tiktok it was all about you know connecting with people like the duets and like building community that way as opposed to just look at this video i posted this is me you should follow me because i'm cool uh, so <laughs> yeah, I would say it's just like having a team of people to work with as opposed to being alone in my room is my goal in life. <laughs> how do you, how do you keep up, um, the community engagement? Like what, what do you, do you do? Is in, I, I was going to ask you before you made that endpoint because it kind of, it's something that I like to talk about and it's something that I've struggled with personally in that like mm. people creators need to be better at not just being the, a person that just posts a video and like <laughs> in a way I'm not going to do it, like the way, the way that you just said it like that. And then, and then they don't offer more value to the community because that mm-hmm. in, in itself is another whole section of being a creator. If, if you want to be a, 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 a big and sustainable one, like I feel like yeah. that it's from a streamer perspective, uh, you need to be, really on top of community engagement and management. I'm just wondering yeah, what your I, thoughts are on that and how, how you do that, manage that and fits into your like lifestyle. I think a lot of people rely on relatability, which is great. Mm. That's definitely something that can build community. I always have a certain level of like amount of a wall up in my content because I am not comfortable sharing everything about my day to day. Like I'm, Never going to be the content creator that gets on the app and cries or tells you about a breakup. I'm, I just can't. I just can't. Like, I, I have to have that privacy. But I will be the creator who will put out the cringiest duettable video that you've ever seen. And then you can react to it. You can duet it. You can add your two cents. And I just think, like, making content with the viewer in mind the viewer now transforming from just a viewer to almost everyone trying to become content creators. I found the the biggest supporters are your fellow content creators. So making content for other musicians, artists, I make rap duets. I'll do like a cut of me singing a feature and then have space for rappers to sing over it. Stuff like that where I can help people who don't really feel that they are empowered by their own content yet or don't really know what to do, try out different things. Um, And then also, you know, streaming is the main reason that I did that is because I wanted to build my community and let them get to know me more. So you you can know about my personal life all you want on stream because nobody's really going back and watching that to us. Like nobody's going back and watching my bods like that to the point where I'm like, all right, but. (laughs) <laughs> not yet yeah. but and then my my irl content is also a way to do that but that's still very i can only have like 200 people max in an event so yeah. far so i need more space but yeah i would say i would say making content that your audience can also create off of is really important to build community how does someone come out of their show in their content on tiktok how does how does how would someone like i mean i don't i mean it took me a bit of time to to do it but i think a lot of creators are too they're too in their comfort zone on tiktok Mm -hmm. they they don't their content doesn't stand out it's too it's just the same as everybody else and i just like how do they how do they do it It, Uh, it's really hard i uh, mean i would just say Making content that makes, this is so cliche, but truly like making content that feels like something you can be proud of instead of you think others will like. So 
one thing I, I did early on in my content was I made it very formal. I had a microphone, I have my pink backdrop, and that was my brand. And I'm bringing that brand, brand back because that was unique about me. And I took it away because I was like, oh, no one's doing that. Everyone's just filming themselves like walking around, singing a song, you know? So in doing that, I did get some viral videos, but I also lost my individuality on the app where I'm like, oh, now I think a lot of my audience can't recognize me anymore. Cause that was like my stable image and everyone knew from the pink backdrop, from the micro microphone immediately who I was. So I would say having a, a steady image that you can be proud of and that is different from other people that you don't get from anyone else. Like just leave TikTok for like a month, leave TikTok, don't watch any videos and create from nothing. I feel like that's, that's the best way to just find your own voice. Cause I was not watching TikTok videos when I made my TikTok. It was literally just a spam account. I wasn't thinking yeah. about going viral. And that's when I made like my, the most unique content. Oh really? What, when you were just, just creating off of nothing basically. What? Yeah. No care in the world, no from, influence. Like, yeah, it came from the top. Like I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, I just saw this person being, cause even if you don't think you're being influenced, you're being influenced. You're always, always. Yeah. You're always being influenced. So just leave the app for a little bit and create from there. I, I, I don't want, how am I supposed to do that though? He's, <laughs> I need Dude, to I don't know. You <laughs> stop watching just TikTok. You're right though. You're always influenced by other people's TikToks and you may think that you've got this unique idea in your head, but someone else has probably already done it. Yeah. And it's, and it's probably, and it's probably it. better as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before we wrap up then, like how, what, what um, you've talked about um, like in two years time, you want to start doing the voiceovers and stuff just wondering like does that mean you would you really stop creating content you will you really stop your tiktoks i don't i'm not sure Probably. whether i believe that or not okay i'm not gonna I'm, i i won't stop completely because people will still be asking for it but at a certain point i will start i will stop creating certain types of content i yeah. do believe i will still create my covers my covers will always be where i started i love i'm a singer i love singing i'm always gonna create my covers but in terms of like skits or you know reaction content i'm not doing yeah. none of that unless unless my skit thing becomes like something more professional and i get more like like a team behind it then yeah, i would yeah. be able to do it um do you think your life yeah. lifestyle stuff is more the stuff that you could see more longevity in 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 continuing i think my lifestyle stuff is really just because i think people need to know where to go in New York City that are not the, <laughs> have you ever seen those New York TikToks where it's like the girls talking super fast or super loud and annoying and they're like, this is my favorite bar in New York City <laughs> and this is yada yada. I hate those videos. So I made a whole series. It's like a hundred nerdy things to do in NYC. And it's like all the nerdy stuff you can do in the city that no one knows about because no one makes those videos. So I'm just trying to put people on. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other aspirations for different content or, or or that or you've already gone through them all um yeah i would say i would say that's i have too many aspirations is the issue and really i just want to be on somebody payroll and <laughs> be able to like host something or act in a show or voiceover that's that's really my major goal so now i'm i'm leaning and making content that's going to help me towards those goals yeah as opposed to helping grow my platforms because ah, i am I like at the point where I'm satisfied, not satisfied, but I'm happy with where my platform has gotten me. I'm, I'm happy with the community I've built, but I don't want to be mega famous per se from streaming or content creating. I'd rather be known for something else where I don't have to be worried about analytics. That makes have sense. Have someone else do all the work. Someone else do all the editing. That makes total sense because it's, that's the same. That's the same as me really. Uh, I, I, come to a point where i'm creating content not because it's primarily going to bring me income where it's going to go like that i'm doing it to lead to opportunities that will bring me uh, a, a corporate job that i really really enjoy doing something that i enjoy based off the content that i'm creating 
exactly. Uh, that's that is like. I'll see you in corporate. <laughs> I'll be there too. Well, hopefully. yeah, I'm happy with corporate. It pays <laughs> it pays all right and it's stable and stuff. But are there? There are definitely places that I want to be in corporate that I'm that I'm not near, and my job won't get me there because right. it's just not in line with where I want to be. But if I can create content that is in line with that and just like you're doing, just build your name, build your reputation, build your expertise, build your knowledge. You really get noticed. It's then, crazy. Then like. you get noticed by the right people and you've got all this, your content is your portfolio, basically your work mm-hmm. portfolio saying, well, this is everything that I know. This is, this is, I think this is related to what you do and what I want. Well, it's, it's not a thing you, you know, it is like, it's not, you're deliberately, yeah. you're deliberately doing it because you know, it is like then, my, my friends, uh, are at RDC world one. They, um, this is a great example of that. They have been creating skits uh, on YouTube for years. They've got millions of followers now, but they put in the work, obviously. And Issa Rae found them, and now they got an anime coming out, their own anime and a live action show. So it's like, wow, they're going to be on HBO because of YouTube. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There. <laughs> Wish it was that easy, but... I, well they put in 10 years 10 yeah, years 10 years yeah that's not even that much that's not even that long but <laughs> for 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 a 16 17 18 year old 10 years is a is a, is a lifetime that's that's way too yeah long. they want to be famous in two <laughs> two years and making millions but yeah i think luckily for me i'm sure with you where like as i've got older i'm almost more content and happier with things taking longer like because i because i can mm-hmm. I, as long as I know that I'm working towards it, it doesn't matter if it takes five, ten years. Slow growth is still growth. I'm I'm not going to be that old in that, in that period of time. I've still got <laughs> my life, like a, a long period of my life ahead of me. I yeah. don't I don't have to make it in two years' time. Otherwise, otherwise, it's I'm a failure. Like, but yeah, no. I think a lot of people have that mindset from young. I think now because they see all these big superstar, well, TikTokers, YouTubers TikTokers. that like uh, <clears throat> apparently living this lavish lavish lifestyle but i don't but think they have it, no friends don't, it doesn't paint yeah it doesn't paint doesn't paint the whole picture in my opinion yeah um before we wrap up then like any kind of advice then for someone starting on on tiktok like anyone that's like <clears throat> wants to post doesn't know what to post or too scared of posting like if they're starting a new account like what 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 would like your your advice be for them uh, my advice now, because TikTok has changed, it's harder. It's harder to get on TikTok. It's harder to get noticed on TikTok. I would, if you are going to start with trends, make sure you do an individual spin on the trend or no one's going to care. We've all seen people do the renegade 20,000 times. Can you do it in a dinosaur costume? Like, you got to do something different to, like, stand out. Um, and then once you get viewers coming in from things like that, then branch out and start trying your own like unique content and see what sticks and then make that video over and over and over again i sang the same song on tiktok at least 10 or 15 times and i would just make the most i would do the most ridiculous cringe things with it like i would do popcorn karaoke where i would sing like a syllable of each word and the people would duet me and try to film the syllables insane insane but did great because no one was doing that So, yeah, I would say just like find what sticks and then make that video 20 million times until you're sick of it, until your audience is sick of it, and then find something new and then do it again. Are they not commenting saying you've already, you've already, oh, they were definitely commenting. (laughs) They're like, how many times will she do this? (laughs) It's good for the engagement. Just, just a question like off the back of that, like when you (laughs) say look, look for trends, like how do you, how are you defining in your head like when something is a trend like or when you're going all right well like what is it that you look for that you go oh this is something that i can see is a trend i'm gonna do it like i'm curious like yeah how is it the just you've seen it five times already it's viral Mm -hmm. or like yeah like how do you decide this well you can kind of tell when a sound is blowing up like I'll, i'll click on a sound and if the accounts that have used the sound are smaller accounts that have blown up from the sound i can pretty much tell that yeah. It's a good sound to use. Okay. But in terms of my niche, like anime TikTok, it's gotten bigger, but 
there have been a lot of anime TikTok specific trends. Yeah. And even the trends that are on like the larger like whole of TikTok, if I see that it's trending like crazy, I'll just take it, turn it into like an anime song, fit it to my niche. Yeah. I think that's important. Like mm -hmm. it is smart to niche down. It also helps you with like brands and like brand deals later on. Um, so yeah, I would just say like you <laughs> sucks, but you gotta, you gotta be on TikTok a lot and just know what's trending. And mm -hmm. the, the, the easy part is to get some mutuals who do a bunch of trends and just <laughs> know when they're doing a trend, <laughs> take a video. Like, yeah. and make I think, cool. I think trends is super untapped by a lot of people. It's something that I realized like at some point and I, I, I started doing trends on, on my other account and like, like I said to my people on my stream, I was like, going to start doing trends a bit out of my comfort zone. Like I don't like doing the trends cause they're very, I don't know, they're a bit cringe. Like, and I was like, but fuck, it, I'm going to start doing them. And then like three videos in like one was like 3 million views, which was like the, the most views that I'd had on a TikTok. And I was like, <laughs> I fucking said it. Trends, trends. And then I did another Don't one. Don't run from the cringe. You, and then you I did another have one. Comments. I hated I hated it, but at the same time I was like, do you know what? I I love the million views more. So like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and I, like I just you get a million views in a in a thirty dollar check from TikTok. What yeah, else yeah, do you yeah. want? <laughs> I think yeah, like trends is definitely something that I think people are scared of because one, because they are a bit cringe. Two, I think they yes. do require some level of creativity when you niche down on it. But like this, that's mm -hmm. it's it's so ta it's it's so easy to find a, a super viral trend, and you actually look in your niche, and no one's no one's done it. Like you, no, you one's, no, done no one's done it. And like, but that trend did well in this niche, in this niche, in this niche, because I don't know, it's just got something about it that it's just drawing human humans humans attention for some reason. <laughs> no, yeah. no, matter, no matter what they're interested in. Um, and people should just jump on it. But again, you have to be on TikTok a lot, don't you? You have to be like, okay, yeah. like I do follow some of the trend accounts, but they're a bit slow. Like I've got a few accounts there that they say that they're the ones that highlight the trends, but they're off they're often too slow as well. And they don't Honestly, just take the trends that you think are best for you. Yeah. It doesn't have to be every trend. Yeah. But trends, yeah. I think it is trends. yeah. I, I completely agree because I've seen it work for a lot of people. Yeah. It does. Oh, um, I don't think I have any final questions. I think we've covered a lot there. Um, and I really Thank you for having me. I really appreciate your time. That was really insightful. Just Wait, how did you find me, by the way? Because I, I think I followed you first. I think so on TikTok, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I saw that you did a video <clears throat> with Kat, who I follow. I don't yeah, know I did. her personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I follow her for, like, Twitch advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did an interview with Kat, who's, who's amazing because she does streaming education advice as well. Mm -hmm. And it's relatively big on tiktok for that i think within streaming education she probably has the biggest yeah. does anyone have a bigger account than her i don't think so i think she definitely has one of the largest uh streaming education tiktok mm -hmm. accounts and she just absolutely just funnels content now uh i yeah. really wish that i could match that cadence but i just can't uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> but yeah um yeah it was really nice speaking to you I'm, I'm i'm so glad that you came on uh with with relatively little knowledge or information about myself uh um so i i appreciate and respect uh that um jump straight in isn't it so uh, i just i, I was you like you live by it a podcast so about streaming lit <laughs> <laughs> well thanks so much um but yeah <laughs> other than that uh so when when where can people find you uh like which where where do where do you want people to find you? you've got many accounts like <laughs> I mean, I would love for you guys to follow me on Instagram or YouTube because yeah. then you'll actually see my content on Instagram and I yeah. repost pretty much all my best content from TikTok onto my Instagram. So at Toasty Marshmallow underscore. Um, and also the same on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest. Yeah. What are you doing? So, on P what are you doing on Pinterest? Sorry. I'm reposting all of my lifestyle content onto Pinterest. Pictures or videos? As I uh, videos they videos. just released idea pins which is like the new video thing on pinterest and those have been doing pretty pretty well i have 10 followers so far pinterest you're just i'm sorry we're digressing here we're about to finish but pin, <laughs> pin, you're making a, a good decision going to pinterest 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 are growing their creator program 
uh i can tell but i have 10 followers they're they're making they're hiring in that in division um <clears throat> like in terms of their creator management uh teams yeah. are they're expanding uh someone that oh. used to work at twitch now work he now heads up their team um and uh my sister is also does uh she's on like the creator program kind of thing she's oh. like in talks with them so it's there's some insider info here okay. so you should well, I'm gonna it, keep it's, it's not a, it's not a waste of time doing it like I promise yeah. you. if you can find like what works for you and your content like because mm-hmm. it is a different it's a very different platform to the others like i think you just gotta f- figure out what people want on there like i've got yeah. i've actually got no idea but like i know that it's Me not either. just somewhere where you just build picture boards anymore um yeah which is Maybe that's maybe like what people when just people thought TikTok was just people dancing. It's probably at that same stage now where it's now evolving into something that's a bit more like, oh, like I actually probably would use Pinterest for a certain type of content. So yeah, I would definitely yeah. explore that. Everyone's trying to become each other. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> oh yeah. So I completely digressed there, but yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot for being on the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate yes. it. Um, and I hope, I hope, what time is it there? I was going to say, have a nice evening. It's, it's 6.17 just... here. It's probably late for you. Oh, it's not too late. It's quarter past 10. It's not too bad. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, well, yeah. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening and uh, have a great week. Thank you. Bye, Bye.